Hello guys, Matthew here and welcome back again to the Tactic YouTube channel. In between of testing out some AMD's Ryzen motherboards and CPUs, I've decided to check out one more KB Lake chipset based motherboard for Intel's 6th and latest 7th generation of core CPUs. This one being a pretty interesting model from MSI, the H270 Tomahawk Arctic. As this is a H270 chipset based motherboard, overclocking is not an option, so I've opted out in taking a closer look at the features that it brings in and do a detailed overview of that. Being somewhat of a budget motherboard, you won't get a lot in terms of the bundle, your usual manuals and optical disc with drivers and software, two SATA cables, back IO shield and of course the motherboard itself. As you can notice, design-wise, this is definitely not your standard-looking motherboard. We have this at least to me really gorgeous combination of white and silver color camouflage with some aluminum and almost chrome-like accents like on this IO cover. It definitely reminds me of their more expensive titanium series of motherboards. All in all, this will go great with some theme-specific builds, although there's not a lot of components out there on the market that will go hand-in-hand -hand with it in terms of complementary aesthetics. For the graphics card from top of my head their Quicksilver series or Galax Hall of Fame series will go great with this motherboard. Put it in a white NZXT or silver Fantex chassis and you got yourself a very cool looking build. Around the socket you'll find a pretty decent 10 phase power design which is a part of their military class 5 power delivery system which is also consisted out of 10 year rated titanium chokes and black caps. All of this is a good and reliable power system, you cannot actually take a full advantage of it as this chipset doesn't support overclocking. Right off that you can see that we have 4 slots for up to 64GB of DDR4 RAM with speeds up to only 2400MHz using XMP profile as that's also one of the limits of the H270 chipset. Speaking of the slots, for PC Express ones we have 3 PC Express 3.0 x16 with electrical x16 configuration for the first main one which is reinforced with their steel armor protection and that is also present on the RAM slots and on one M.2 slot, while other two come in X4, X1 electrical configurations beside the 3 Peace Express 3.0 X1 slots. On this model you can only do a two-way X16, X4 crossfire multi-GPU setup, so no SLI support, which is reasonable having in mind that this is a H270 chipset based motherboard and that this will be used by the mainstream users who generally speaking do not consider multi-GPU setups. Do note that the second M.2 slot on the bottom is a turbo one with 32 gigabit per second bandwidth, which is achieved using the PCI Express 3.0 X4 lane from that second X16 slot. So if you populate that one, you won't be able to do a multi-GPU configuration, which I've talked about. On the other hand, if you populate any of M.2 slots, and this motherboard has two of those, one of the SATA 3 ports will be disabled, which will get a total of six of them, but that can actually vary depending on the scenario and type of drives which you use in those M.2 slots and I suggest you check upon that within the motherboard's manual. One last thing in regards of the M.2 slots, being a KB Lake chipset based motherboard, this model also supports Intel's Obtain memory technology. Just left of that you can see the ESD separated audio circuitry portion with Camicon audio caps and Realtake's 7.1 ALC892 audio codec, which is a bit disappointing since we nowadays have more up-to-date and better alternatives like the ALC1220 or ALC1150 which can be found on similarly priced rivals. Going back to the right side you can see that we have this very cool looking passive heatsink for the chipset while moving up along of that right edge, we have two USB 3.0 headers, one is even under 90 degree angle, kudos to MSI for that, of course your 24 pin ATX power connector alongside of the 8 pin EPS power connector at the left top corner, you will also find four small LEDs for easier troubleshooting upon self check and post, basically it's meant for fast debugging. Speaking of the LEDs, the motherboard has few white ones beneath it on this also gorgeous and very clean looking back and few on the chipset's heatsink, which gives it that extra something in a subtle way. In terms of other connectors, around the board you'll find a total of 6 4-pin PWM fan headers, one of which has a special power treatment if you want to connect a water pump to it, and on the bottom you will find your usual USB, audio, com and front panel headers, as well as one 4-pin RGB LED header which goes together with their Mystic Light Sync software utility. 
Lastly, for back iOS, you'll get a pretty decent array of connections, most noticeable ones being the USB 3.1 with one type C and one type A ports, courtesy of a third party S Media chip, four USB 3.0 and two USB 2.0 ports, combo PS2 port, two video outputs, Intel's Gigabit LAN port, and analog and digital audio in and out jacks with gold plated connections. That's it guys for this time from me, thank you once again for watching, feel free to toss me a thumbs up if you like what you saw, that really helps me a lot, leave a comment down below if you have any questions about this product, or if you want to leave your suggestions, and of course feel free to subscribe for content further down the line, or you can just check out some of my other videos from before. Until then, catch you later guys!